But Narka is a master of fake repentance. He seems super duper repentant, unbelievably repentant, but he's not repentant at all. There isn't an ounce of repentance in him. In this video, I'll cover the signs of the narc fake repentance. Before I launch into my material, I ask you to join our Escape the Narc team by subscribing to my YouTube channel. We're getting more and more subscribers. We're thrilled by that. We're building a movement and we want you to be a part of it. We make no bones about it. There are no apologies. We get the spouses of narcs out of those marriages. Leave and divorce. That's our ministry and God is blessing us in that. When you're married to a monster who's destroying you and destroying your kids, you need to get the heck out. I won't just tell you that. I'll tell you exactly how to do it all the way through. So join us. Okay, here are the signs of narc fake repentance. One, a lame apology for his damaging sins. If you get an apology at all, it'll be general, vague, no details. Uh, things like he'll say, I use poor judgment. Yeah, no kidding. Is there an apology in there somewhere? Narc? He'll say, I'm sorry if I hurt you. If? What do you mean if? Yes, you hurt me. I'm sorry for the hurt I caused. What hurt? What did you do specifically? He won't tell you. I'm sorry you got hurt. Yeah, I got hurt because of you. You did it intentionally. It's always evading responsibility in these ridiculously lame apologies. Two, the narc blames you for his abusive actions. If you hadn't fill in the blank, I wouldn't have done it. Your fault. If you had done this in some proactive way, I wouldn't have done what I did. Okay, really? You're blaming me? How dare he blame you for what he did? The narc has to put all or part of the blame on you. Got an email from a lady who told me the narc prayed this prayer right in front of her and he, and he had just committed a major sin and they're praying. The prayer should have been, dear God, help me change. It's all my fault. No, no, here's what she got. Here's what the narc prayed. May the hard hearts and stiff necks be broken, he prayed. <laughs> he was talking about not him, but her. Classic narcdom. I said to her, stop praying with that dirt ball. Three, the dark demands immediate forgiveness from you. Oh, I mean right stinking now. He'll say, I said I was sorry, so forgive me right now. You couldn't forgive him right away if you wanted to, which you shouldn't anyway. Forgiveness is a process. It takes time and healing and effort. Anyone who demands forgiveness immediately is not repentant in any way. When you don't forgive right away, he makes your unforgiveness the issue. He'll run to the pastor, your family, your friends, and say, I, I asked for forgiveness, and, and she didn't forgive me. Well, of course you haven't forgiven him. You, you just got the news. You're, you're, there'll be a weeks or months, if it's a serious sin, like adultery, to heal. Now, and so these, he'll get these people that, to turn against you to convince you that somehow you're wrong because you're not forgiving him. Please. Four, the narc demands that you move on immediately and never talk about his sins again. So forgive me right away and never bring up what I did again. Because guess what? That shows you haven't forgiven me. The narc will say things like, we can't dwell in the past. We need to move forward. When you talk about my sins, it makes me feel bad, which it should. Stop beating me up. See, he's turning it on you somehow, even though he's the one that sinned and harmed you terribly. It's your fault because you're not moving on. Pathetic. There is no healing as a couple unless you talk about his sins. Of course, there's no healing for you if you're married to a narc anyway. But this is when you can spot the fake repentance. Five, the narc will promise you the moon, the stars, the entire universe. He'll promise you everything you have always needed and wanted from him. It's funny how he knows exactly what you need. He hasn't done it up to now, but he can give you chapter and verse and exactly what he's gonna do for you. Why hasn't he done those things up to now? Because he's not gonna do them now either. Maybe for a week or two, maybe a month or two if you're lucky. He wants your focus to be on what he's offering, not what he's done to damage you. The narc is a master of distraction. His promises are just that, promises. He has no intention of actually fulfilling them. He knows he doesn't have to. He sucks you in. You may get a few weeks of better, maybe a month, and then he'll drop all the promises and go right back to being the narc. Six, the narc will check the boxes to show he's changing. He's not an idiot. Okay, I, he talked to the pastor. He attends church regularly. You know what that means? Nothing, unless you're actually walking with the Lord. He joins a men's Bible study. Who cares? He can show up. He reads his Bible. He sees a counselor. Who cares? It's all for show. Look what I've done. 
and produces no change. And the narc will often say, oh, look at all these things I've done. Bam, 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 bam. Truly repentant men and women never bring up what they've done because they know it doesn't mean anything until they really change. Seven, for his awesome repentance, all that he's doing, the narc expects you to faint from gratitude and hold a parade in his honor. See, it's still about him. Now he's, he was the worst sinner. Now he's the best repenter. Come on. He wants his acts of repentance to distract you from his awful sins. He wants attention and praise for his fake repentance, if you don't mind. Eight, if the narc does do, if he does do individual counseling, many will, he'll lie to the counselor, he'll snow the counselor who believes he's changed. He'll, he'll just pull the wool over his eyes or hers. He'll convince the counselor, you are now the problem. Nine, if the narc does marriage counseling, and by the way, never do marriage counseling with the narc. If right now you'd say, Dave, look, I'm in marriage counseling now with the narc. Stop it. It's a waste of time and money. If you see a marriage counselor, he's going to fool the counselor. He'll control the sessions. He'll get the focus on your mistakes. If he's confronted by the counselor, he'll storm out never to return. Very often in this session, if he's not confronted, he'll he'll act like he's do he'll do it he'll he agrees, but he won't do any of the things that are recommended. Ten, the narc says he is changed, different right now. There's no process of change. I'm different now. He doesn't need time to change. He's already changed. It's a miracle. He's very close to God. He has seen the light. The truth is, he doesn't know God at all. It's all an act, a fake spiritual performance. Brilliantly done, but fake. Eleven, the narc plays the victim. They're masters at this. He'll cry crocodile tears. He's in such terrible pain because of the pain he caused you. This is so hard for him. He actually wants sympathy from you and others. His pain, he thinks, is much greater than the pain he's caused you. <laughs> in what world is that true? In the narc world. What he does is hijack your pain. Twelve, the narc fools and then sends useful idiots to convince you he's changed to pressure you to forgive him right now, to take him back, to give him another chance, to end the separation, to stop the divorce. Decent, naive Christians are easily fooled by the narc. Absolutely. Ignore them. They have no idea what the narc is like. He has tricked them. His useful idiots want the miracle. The miracle will be them figuring out the truth and confronting the narc. That's not going to happen. Many church leaders are fooled by the narc, give him a pass, and confront you and blame you because you won't give Bob another chance. The narc's fake repentance is actually more emotional abuse of you. It's lying and manipulating on an epic scale, and the narc loves pulling it off. You know how much fun it is? If This is the narc thinking, if I can fool everybody, including my wife, that, that I've actually changed and I get her back and she, and she comes back to live with me and she suspends a divorce. She, she doesn't divorce me. Oh, the rush. That's not normal. He's not going to change. He just wants to work his magic. Okay, here's what I want you to do. When you see all these bogus repentant actions, first, throw up in a bucket, maybe more than one. Second, get my book, Escaping Your Narcissist. I've got a whole section in this book on narc fake repentance. It's worth the price of the book. And this is a guide, a complete guide to divorcing a narc. It's on my website, David E. Clark, PhD.com, Clark of the Knee. And third, ignore all the narc's fake repentant actions. Stay quiet, stay unimpressed, give him zero encouragement. If you're separated, stay separated. Don't go to marriage counseling. If you file, do not cancel it. And no marriage counseling again. I'm begging you, I keep saying that, don't waste your time. Then wait a few weeks, maybe a month, and if you hold the line and you don't waver, the narc will be furious and he'll turn on you like a snake, proving the whole performance was just that, a performance and it was fake. He'll attack you, he'll character assassinate you, he'll blame you, he'll call you abusive, and then you'll know for sure it was all an act.